Good morning, Lyric Services. Trisha Warner here with your Wednesday workout. Happy that you continue to join me for these. Um, keep up the great work. Um, I'm proud of you. I hope that you feel good after doing these sessions. And always remember that if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, requests, um, or if there's something going on in your body you'd like me to help you address, I'm here for you. Uh, send me an email, uh, comment here on YouTube, and let me know what's going on, and I would be happy to help you do that. Um, and don't feel like that, you know, that's out of the ordinary. I've had quite a few people contact me already, and I think that they were happy and satisfied with the um, individual attention I was able to give them. So that's available for you as well. But let's get to it because we only got 30 minutes to get everything in. We're going to start in laying down position. How happy are you about that? Oh, before we um, go get comfy, uh, make sure you have one pound weights or one to threes and a roll of toilet paper. Mine is already squished and, and wrapped in saran wrap because I've been using it since this pandemic started for just showing people some home modifications for certain exercises. So, um, or a small ball would work well. So one of those small squishy balls, if you have something like that, or your kids' um, soccer ball would even work. But um, everybody has a roll of toilet paper kicking around. So go ahead and grab that, pause the video, and then come back and join me in um, laying down in a comfortable position with your knees bent and your feet flat uh, about hip width apart. So we're gonna just start with a little bit of um, rib breathing here. So you're gonna bring your hands to the side of your rib cage. And I want you to take a nice deep breath in. Let's just center ourselves in our rib cage and work on um, getting our breathing bones aligned here. So you're gonna inhale, feel your ribs expand in your hands. And then as you exhale, go ahead and use your hands with a little over pressure to draw the rib cage in towards your spine. Close your eyes if that helps you kind of feel what's going on in your body and just kind of breathe and feel your rib cage expand into your hands and then exhale. And like you're playing your rib cage like an accordion music squeeze box, go ahead and inhale and exhale. And when you practice this, you'll know you'll get, you'll get more mobility with it. When I first started doing Pilates years ago, my rib cage didn't move all that much. I was a diaphragmatic breather initially just by nature and I had to kind of find these inspiration and expiration muscles between the ribs here. You have these little muscles called your intercostals and, and I had to find them on my body. They just weren't naturally doing their thing. And last one, it feels so good to just Sit here and, and focus on our breath, last one. Great. Now you can bring your hands to the front of your hip bones. Find those bones, dig in there, find them. Feel the little um, bony prominence right in the front of your hips. And now we're going to do a little bit of a pelvic clock in this position. So you're gonna exhale as you tip your tailbone up, pressing your low back down into the mat. Feel that those bones move up towards your, your head. And then inhale as you tip those bones away, pressing your tailbone down and creating a nice space. I don't know if you can see my hand in my low back. Exhale to press your low back in. Inhale, tip the pelvis forward. And exhale. And inhale. Such a good exercise for a healthy low back. Just a quick reminder, everything should feel good with Pilates, maybe some stretch, maybe some work, but never any pain. So if anything bothers you with this, skip it, send me an email, <laughs> let me know what's going on. My email address is trishafinch at hotmail.com, T-R-I-C-I-A-F-I-N-C-H at hotmail.com. So let me know what's going on. And last one. Great. We're just going to stretch your right leg out and your left arm out. So reach them away from each other. And then draw them back in. And opposite arm and leg will reach away from each other. And bring them back in. And just keep alternating. Just getting things warmed up here. You can kind of slide your heel along the mat. If your mat slides. And last one. Good, we're 
coming into the dead bug exercise here. So now we're in a neutral spine. So I wanted to mention that. You're going to be um, not pressed, but not arched. You're kind of in the middle in your neutral spine, which we've talked about in previous videos. Shoulder blades are relaxed, hands are reaching down towards your feet. You're gonna lift one leg up into tabletop and then lower it back down. Switch and lift the other one up and lower it down. And lift and lower and lift and lower. Good, just that. Now we're gonna add the arms. I said just that. Now opposite arm, opposite leg to the leg, yeah. And last one, good. Bring your feet hip width apart, arms are out to the side. You're gonna roll over onto your side. Let your knees kind of fall over to one side so that you're getting a nice rotation stretch through your back and um, reach your arms long. So we're letting the weight of gravity just kind of take your knees down towards the floor and getting a nice rotation stretch through your, um, your back and your hips. And then bring it back up and go over to the other side. You can let your head wherever it goes. And then bring that back up. Br grab your whatever prop you're gonna use, your roll of toilet paper or your ball, whatever it is, and go ahead and bring that between your knees. And give it a little squeeze, not a huge squeeze, like a moderate squeeze. And we're gonna actually grab those weights with our hands at the same time. Arms come up towards the ceiling. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift your legs up to tabletop. I know those abs have to do that for sure. Hold it here. Weights come together, knees are squeezing together. They're gonna to rotate in opposite directions. So your legs are gonna go one way, your arms are gonna go the other. And then exhale to bring them back. Inhale, rock the knees over to one side, arms go to the other. Exhale to come back. Good, we're just gonna alternate back and forth five times each side. There's two. We're working our obliques with this exercise. Three. An under underutilized abdominal muscle, the rectus abdominis, that six pack muscle tends to get all the love and affection, but those obliques do a lot of rotation, a lot of stabilization, They're really important for us. Last one, great. Lower your arms down, lower the legs down, keep the toilet paper or, or ball between your knees. We're gonna come into bridging from this position. So you're gonna inhale to prepare. Exhale, squeeze the toilet paper. It's probably crushed by now. Lift the hips up and lower back down. We're doing 10, let's go one and two and three, four, five. Squeeze that prop nine and 10, coming down. Now we're gonna do it a little slower with articulation, which means I want you moving each vertebrae individually. So you're gonna come into that little posterior pelvic tilt, you're pressing your low back into the mat, and then you're slowly peeling your back up off the mat, inhaling at the top, exhaling, softening your chest, rolling down through your spine, one vertebrae at a time, all the way down to the bottom. We've got four more, let's go. Inhale at the top, exhale, soften the chest, roll it back down. I'm breathing loudly so you can hear the cue. Starting to feel those hamstrings and those glutes. One more after this one. And last one. We're gonna lose the prop, keep the bridge, lift up, hold it, lift one leg up to the ceiling. Good, straighten that leg all the way up. Lower it down to the height of the other leg and then lift it back up five times. Let's go two, three, four. Now we're working, five. Bend the knee down, lift the other leg up, straighten it all the way to the ceiling, lower and lift five times, go one, two, 
three, four, and five. Bend the knee, lower it down. Inhale before you lower yourself all the way down to the mat. We're coming into chest lift. Four step chest lift. So we're gonna do a little coordination of breath with this exercise. You're gonna inhale in this position. As you exhale, you're gonna lift your head and shoulders off the mat. Inhale, arc your arms, reach back to the bottom of your thighs. Exhale, pull on your legs and lift up a little higher. Inhale, arc the arms back behind your head and exhale to roll back down. So it's complicated. It's, it's a lot of coordination of movement and breath, but you're ready for this. So really concentrate, listen to my cues and let's do them together. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift your head and shoulders. Inhale, reach your arms long, grab the back of your thighs. Exhale, pull and reach up a, your chest up a little higher. Inhale, arc your arms back behind your head and exhale to roll back down. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, chest lift. Inhale, arc arms. Exhale, pull a little higher. Inhale, arc the arms back and exhale, roll down. Inhale to arc. Exhale to lift a little higher. Inhale to arc again. And exhale to roll back down. Let's do two more. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift your chest up. Inhale, arc the arms. Exhale, pull a little higher. Inhale, arc the arms. Exhale, roll back down. And the last one, you got it now. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, arc. Exhale, pull a little higher. Inhale, arc again, and exhale, roll all the way down. Nice job, stretch your legs out long, reach your arms up overhead. And just because we sit so much, let's reach our arms and legs away from each other. Like, like you're the rope in a tug of war and somebody's pulling on your arms and somebody's pulling on your feet and you're stretching, stretching, stretching and reaching all those tissues nice and long. And then relax, turning over onto your side, we're gonna come into a sideline leg series. If you'd like a pillow under your head, uh, feel free to go ahead and grab that. Otherwise, you can just kind of tuck your arm under your head. You want to make sure that your neck is in line with your body. It shouldn't be up here on the pillow, but it also shouldn't be down here on the floor. So try to figure out where your center is. Your nose should be lined up with your sternum, which is lined up with your pubic bone, um, all the way down to between the feet. So get a nice, long sideline position. Abs are, glide, are um, engaged and lifted up. If you want to make this a little harder, you can bring your hand up on your hip or your uh, up on your hip or your side. If it's a little hard for you, then maybe put your hand down here or kind of up on your arm is fine. So we're going to do side leg lifts. We're going to do five slow and five fast. So let's lift it up. One, two, three, four, five, and down. Two, three, four, five, and about that tempo. We really want to separate out the slow twitch muscle fibers from the fast twitch muscle fibers with this exercise right now. And it's hard to do it slow, it's different. You're definitely recruiting different. I feel a different tremble in the active mover muscles here. I think that was five. And now we're gonna do five fast, so let's go for it. One, two, try to keep your body as still as possible. Three, four, and five. I'm moving a little more than I'd like to be, but that's just where, where I am today and that's okay. Um, we're not going to give ourselves a hard time. We're going to celebrate what we are doing, okay? So now bring this hand to the front because otherwise I think it's going to be really difficult to balance. We're going to do a small kick forward and a small kick back. And I really want you thinking about keeping this connection here. So the back isn't arching. It's not flexing. You're only moving your leg as far as you can while keeping the body still. What I don't want is this, where you're you know, whole body's moving. That's not the exercise. Two more. One, and this one's hard for me too today. And two, good, keep the leg up. We're gonna fatigue this, that's okay. We have to fatigue in order to strengthen. Circle it around one, about the size of a dinner plate. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Switch and go the other way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Very good, bend your knees in, let's come into the clamshell. Take that top hand thumb right to your hip bone, fingers fan out over your glute, and tuck those knees in pretty tight to your chest. And then you're just gonna open the top knee up, 
and down. 10 times, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Feel the burn in that glute, piriformis, 10, good. Straighten the legs all the way back out. Keep that top hand on your hip for this one. Squeeze your legs together. Actually, grab your prop again. Bring it between your ankles. Now you have something to push against. Squeeze that toilet paper or that ball between your legs. Give it a good squeeze. And then lift both legs off the floor. One and two. Make sure your neck isn't straining. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. Come on, nine and 10, great job. You can push the prop out from between your ankles. Come up onto your elbow. We're gonna do a little side plank and I'll give you two variations. Um, if this is definitely a challenge, challenging exercise for you, keep one knee down. You're still gonna get the work and you can progress to a full side plank. So this is um, the easier variation, not easy, <laughs> easier. So you're just lifting your hip up off the floor, elbows right under your shoulder. Make sure it's not somewhere crazy. Look down, is it under your shoulder? You can check that yourself. Pressing your elbow down into the floor, pressing the bottom leg down into the floor, you're gonna lift your hip up five times. Full side plank is their legs are gonna be stacked. Just wanna move that out of the way. Feet are stacked, same position with the upper body. And then you're lifting your hip up. Let's do five, two, three, four and five. Nice job. Sit down, spin around, other side. And you're going to lay on your side. Legs are out straight. We're going to do those five slow, five fast. Figure out where your arm position needs to be. And then we're going to go ahead and lift up with the top leg. One and slow down. And two and down. Three, four, and five, five fast. Let's go one, two, three, four, and five. Good, find that position of balance. Draw those abdominals up. Hand comes down in front. We're gonna kick forward and back, and forward and back. Good, just like that. Keeping that body nice and still. You'll see one side's easier than the other. They always are. If you're in tune with what's going on, last one. And then we're coming to those dinner plate size circles. So circle around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch the other way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower it down, bend the knees in, tuck them in tight. Top hand thumb goes to your hip bone, fingers fan out over your glute. You're gonna lift that top knee up and lower it down. 10 times, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Mine was hiked way up to my ear. Nine and 10, good. Grab your prop, put it between your ankles, stretch your legs out, straight and strong. Squeeze that prop, get those inner thighs engaged. Lifting your waist away from the floor, head and neck are relaxed. And you're gonna lift both legs off the floor for 10 times, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Great job, kick the prop out. Whoop, where's it going? And then coming into your side plank variation. And maybe one side you have to modify and one side you don't, and that's fine too. Your elbow is right under your shoulder. You can bend that bottom knee or keep it out straight. Let's do five. Pick your one. Here we go. One, two. They get easier the more you do it, I promise. Four and five. Nice job. From here, we're going to flip right over onto our stomachs. And we're going to do a little bit of a uh, single leg kick. So up on your elbows, let's find some spine extension through our upper back, our thoracic spine. Let's get a good position so we're not kind of hunkered down like this. Our shoulders are gliding down our back. Our neck is long. Gaze is kind of just in front of your mat. Your eyes are looking. Feet are about hip width apart. 
And before we even begin, I want you to think about drawing your belly button up away from the floor. So just a little bit of tension, just not, not gripping through our abdominal wall, but just gently offload the weight of your belly button. We've talked about that many times. And then you're gonna bend one leg two times. Bend it up one, two, straighten it, lift it, and lower it. Good, I'm gonna move my prop out of the shot so you can see. <laughs> and switch to the other leg. Bend one, two, straighten, lift, and lower. Other leg, one. So we're alternating legs, lift and lower. Bend it, one, two, straighten, lift and lower. Don't try to lift the leg too high. You'll come into your back instead of your hip. So just keep alternating, let the leg go where it goes. But think about the muscles on the back of the leg. That's what I want you thinking about. I do want you tapping in to feeling that activation in the glute and the hamstring. You do get sensory feedback from these muscles. You feel them working. You don't always get that same feedback. Last one here. With other muscles in the body, but you feel your glutes and your hamstrings. You know when those are turned on and working. All right, prone press up. So we're just gonna start halfway and we're gonna progress this into like a fuller swan today. But I want you to work on the upper range first. So get your hands right under your shoulders. Shoulders gliding down your back. You're going to exhale, belly button still engaged. Drawing away from the floor, you're going to press into your hands and just come halfway up. Your lowest rib is still on the mat. We're just coming halfway up and then coming back down. Five times. Press, lift, two. And down. Neck is long. Three. Four. And five. Now you can go up as high as you feel comfortable because now you're arching from your upper back too, and hopefully you're not overextending from the lumbar spine. So try to keep the extension even throughout your spine. That's what I want you to think about. I don't want you to think about just lifting up as high as you can, because then you're gonna move too much from one vertebral segment and not enough through the other. So I want you to find like a nice, even arch through your spine. Um, so many people, when they do press-ups, they just go eh, like arch right. I'm not even gonna demonstrate it, because I'll hurt myself but they bend in half like this from a couple of segments in their lower lumbar spine. And that's what can make you at risk of injury. So what I want you to think is find that upper extension first, then go ahead and add the lower back. And I'll check my camera to see if I'm nice and even. Pretty good. And then come back down. Exhale, press into your hands, lift. Pull those tummy muscles in. And we're getting a nice arch through the whole back and not just bending in half from our low back. One or two more, you listen to your body. It's a powerful stretch. We don't have to do a lot of them, but so good for our back half. And I don't think we've come up all the way. So you should be well prepared for this if you've been following along with the classes. If you've just jumped ahead to this one, um, you, you might want to ease yourself into a little bit or maybe do some of the earlier um, workouts. Okay, from here, we are going to do dart. So now we stretched. Now we're going to build the strength in those extensor muscles so that you can hold yourself up against gravity without the assistance of your hands. So you are lifting head and chest away from the floor halfway. That's it. Halfway. You're just up on that lowest rib like a kickstand of a bike. Float one arm down by your side and then the other arm. I love this exercise for you guys. We are drawing the belly button away from the mat. We are reaching our arms long down towards our feet so our neck is long and free. And we're gonna pump the arms 50 times. Yes, 50, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, two, three, four. Keep breathing, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, last five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, great job. And I know you felt the little endurance in the back of the arms with that, which is so good for us. Hands under your shoulders, push yourself up. We are coming into quadruped from here. So in this exercise, I want you to isolate some muscles that don't usually get isolated work, uh, the serratus anterior. So it's the muscle that does this. Well, subscap does a little too, but serratus anterior does this. 
And it's not something we often isolate, but we should. It's really good for scapular stabilization. If push-ups are a goal of good upper body strength, of just avoiding shoulder problems, uh, you need to have a strong and engaged serratus anterior muscle. So that's what this is for. So we're on all fours. We're also getting our weight bearing, which is always good for our bone density, right? We need this. So um, let's work our um, serratus exercises here. So rib cage is drawing away from the mat. Don't let it sag like mine wants to. Hold it up. Good, Trish. <laughs> Hold the belly up. Great. And now you're going to let the shoulder blades glide together. You're going to lower your breastbone towards the floor, your sternum, and then press it away from the floor. So we're just lining those, rib, those um, shoulder blades are wrapping around your rib cage. It's tough to isolate. I know what you want to do. You want to go like this. This is what everybody wants to do. And it's hard to isolate it out. So keep, cut yourself a break. If you're not finding it today, that's okay. Practice it, you will find it, and it's good to be able to find it. Keep your arms straight, that's a major cue. Keep the arms straight, and then move your chest away, close, and then away from the mat. This is it. It's not a lot of work. Like you won't feel fatigue like I was talking about with the muscles in the back of the leg. Oh, well, maybe now. I'm starting to feel it a little bit. If you do enough of anything, right? Two more. Good. Now I want you to think about drawing your hands to your knees, but don't move them. Isometrically working. Hands to the knees, knees to the hands. You feel those abs turn on. That's what I want. Tuck your toes underneath. Feel that connection drawing them towards each other. It's like a magnetic force pulling them in. And now float the knees off the floor and hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down, nine, ten. And same thing again. Go ahead and pull and hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, down. And lift and hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down. And let's do one more. And lift and hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down, nine, ten. Great job. Let's come up to sitting. We're going to do a little bit of a little roll down, a little rotation. So arms straight out in front, knees bent, feet flat if they will, if they, if they don't want to go all the way down. Let them go as far as they can. Sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, rolling halfway down. And then coming all the way back up. So test the water a little bit. Now grab your weights. We're gonna do a little arm work here. Sitting up nice and tall. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, roll halfway down. And then lift the arms up and down. It's hard. Your feet wanna lift up, don't let them. Three, I think. Four, we're doing eight. Five, six, seven, and eight. And all the way back up. Nice, let's open the arms up and close them back in. Just a few times, a little chest opening. Keep those feet down, nice and tall, last one. Good, arms forward, inhale, exhale, tuck your tailbone under, roll halfway down. Flip your arms so your palms are up towards the ceiling for bicep curls. Keep the elbows lifted. You wanna come down here, I know, it's easier. I want them up, one, two, we're doing eight, three, four, five, I'm shaking like a leaf. Six, seven, and eight. Woo, good, nice job. And then come all the way down, lower the weights down. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a twist stretch here. So you're gonna cross one leg over the other, grab your knee with both hands, and then turn your body towards that knee and just get a little twist and rotation through your body. You can also look over the hip that's bent. Good, and then stretch that out. Same thing, other side, and twist. And breathe, give yourself some time in this position to let those muscles find some length. Great, and then come out of that. Um, we're gonna do a little rotation stretch here now. So our legs are crossed, arms are out. We're gonna twist our body one way and twist one, two, 
back to center. Other way, one, two, back to center. Find length while you do this. So your spine is like a spiral staircase. It's not just twisting, it's also lifting. It's taking you up, up to the next level. So think of that happening as you move. My shoulder blades do feel like they got some work with that. Good. Last one. Great, a little side bend stretch. It's a little mermaid. If you can't sit with your legs like that, I'm sorry, I should have said, come out to a diamond. If that doesn't work, sit however you can. You can also do this in a chair. You can do this sitting on an ottoman. And a little bit for the hips here. We're gonna bring our legs out like this. You're gonna sit like you're chilling on the beach and you're just gonna let your knees go side to side. So now I don't want your back to move with this one. Like we did when we were laying down flat, we got a nice spine rotation. Now I want all the motion coming from the hips and we're just rocking them, not even thinking about it. And at the end you may feel like, oh wow, that's, I feel something there, that's okay. It's not pain, but it's, it's definitely tight and that's all right. We gotta keep this hip rotation. Great, we're gonna find our way up to standing now. How am I doing on time? Oh, one minute over, okay, good. We're, <laughs> we're almost done, I promise. A little bit for balance and then you are done. You're gonna bring one knee up to your chest, grab it with both hands and stand up tall on that standing leg and hold yourself here. If you need to use the wall or a chair, do so but we're just pulling that knee into our chest and standing really up and tall through that standing leg. And then put that down and let's balance on the other leg. We don't do enough of this. Just standing on one leg, ooh, losing it. It helps to look at something that's not moving. Uh, I just looked at my fan and that's probably why I lost my balance. But if I look straight at this camera and really lock into it, you can find your balance. And maybe count, see where you are with that and how long you can stand on one, one leg. That would be a good thing to observe and see if you can increase that time as you practice. Inhale, float the arms up. Exhale, float them down. You did a fantastic job today. Please revisit this video another time this week and keep up the good work. Stay well. Bye.